Sir, there's been a murder. What? Wrong voiceover? Oh, welcome to the UK OCR's latest podcast, Who's Scott? And here's your host, Lindsay McEwen. Are you sure there's no been a murder though? Hello and welcome to hopefully the first of a few podcasts as a bit of a spin-off um, of the Who's Hot podcast that you'll have listened to as part of um, UKOCR. Um, this podcast or this um, spin-off is going to be called Who's Scott? Um, so I don't know if you can see what we did there, um, but uh, hopefully you find this interesting um, and get a bit of an inside look into the races within the Scottish OCR series. Quick introduction of myself, so I'm Lindsay McEwen. I'm an admin of the Scottish OCR um, community page and also helping to run the Scottish um, series next year alongside and supported by British Obstacle Sports. Um, And we're all really excited to be bringing um, you all a a really fun series, hopefully, um, in Scotland next year, which might help some of those who, um, who for the love of OCR, have to travel quite a lot if you live north of the border. So hopefully we get to race a few more races um, in our home country next year. I'm joined today um, by Gavin Hogarth and Karen Macquarie, who are going to help me to hopefully discuss the first race in our series, which is Winter McTuff. Um, And I'm calling it Winter McTuff because we do have a spring stroke summer McTuff as well in the series. So just to differentiate between those races. So firstly, thank you both for for joining me today. Um, Karen's just off a night shift. So um, yeah, she's not going to wait for long. So thank you very much, Karen, for giving us your time as well. You're welcome. No worries. Um, good stuff. So this is the first year that we've run the Scottish series, um, which is really exciting. We've got five races in the lineup. So we've got Winter McTuff, um, Tartan Warrior. We've got Summer or Spring Summer McTuff, um, Tough Mudder, and then finishing off the series with Beach Ballistic. Are you both excited for the series? Let's come to you first, Gavin. Are you excited for the, Scot- the Scottish OCR series? I'm very excited. Thank you, Lindsay, for bringing it uh, to the Scottish community and, and wider field. Um, also, my car's really excited because it's it's heard that it's not going to have to do as many miles this year. <laughs> Hopefully. So we're looking forward to having a series in Scotland, I think. Um, yeah, bring it on. Brilliant. And Karen, are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited as well. I did the sort of UK series last year. It was really good. Um, and it'll be nice to do some, as Gavin was saying, where you don't have to travel as far. You maybe don't need... You know, a weekend off to get down and back up and just go up for the day. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be really fun. So first up is Winter McTuff on our series list. We've got the 15k race at Knock Hill um, coming up very quickly on the 8th of January. So just a couple of weeks away from from when we're recording today. Um, so if you haven't got your tickets for that, I would suggest you get um, online and get them booked. Maybe spend some of that, hopefully, Christmas money that Santa will have brought you. And hopefully Dean and the team are looking to put on another um, another brilliant race for you this year. So you've both run McClough in the past. And I guess, uh, yeah. Karen, how, how would you describe maybe for this, those first timers, what... What is McTuff and, and how would you describe the McTuff race to those who've maybe never done it before? So it's a it's always a sort of really fun sort of community sort of OCR race where everyone will always try and help each other out uh, where they can. Uh, there's always sort of weird and wonderful challenges in it, um, like climbing over the backs of lorries, pulling like carpools instead of like a sledge, uh, and that sort of like really interesting sort of challenges in it. Uh, the bits I remember being sort of frustrating is the they like lots of switchbacks through an obstacle. Mm. So like up and down like stairs or a uh, back and forward over a river. Um, so it's, it's really good for that point. There's lots of running, usually get quite wet feet very quickly. Uh, and then it's sort of classic as you're jumping to water really near the finish, which is obviously January in Scotland. So it's usually pretty cold. And but... Yeah, it's good fun, and you get a life vest if you can, so it's, it's fine. It's, fun. it's great fun. The switchbacks, I always remember the switchbacks in McGuff because yeah. you kind of get lost. Um, you never quite know where you are in the race because you end up passing people and coming back and passing them again, and you're never quite sure if they were ever going to end. Have you got anything to add to that, Gavin? How would you describe McTuff? I guess if you're up the front, you're kind of maybe having to crack that ice, be the first one through. And Absolutely brutal. 
<laughs> nah, it's uh, like Aaron said, it's got that kind of great vibe about it as a community because <clears throat> it's quite unique with the start line atmosphere, which we missed last year because we had to do a bit of a rolling start because of COVID. So that should be back this year and it's usually... Uh, it could be nearly a thousand people on the start line all going off at once the bagpipes um, they march through the middle of the crowd at the beginning uh, playing the bagpipes fireworks going off uh, the first obstacle I think you actually got hosed yes. by the firemen um, straight away, which, which isn't really appreciated when it's like two degrees and a wind <laughs> minus seven but anyway that's just the way they roll and then you, you smash into these American football players randomly which you don't always uh, get any other OCR. I think it's, it's the local American football team. You have to smash through their pads and stuff. But yeah, and then it's like it's quite cool. You're actually running around the actual Knock Hill racing track itself <clears throat> for the early part of the race. And yeah, you know, lots like Karen said, there's you know a lot, a lot of obstacles that drain you as well and do challenge you uh, in a good way. So you, you know when you're finished, you've really been through the mill. You've really had a, a, a tough challenge. You've really earned your medal. Um, 100% and yeah the, because the time of year inevitably there's that kind of cold factor to it so there's definitely some a, bit, a wee bit of preparation required um, maybe in terms of your clothing choices etc mm-hmm. make sure you're, uh, you've got dry clothes um, easily accessible straight mm-hmm. afterwards get your clothes yeah. on afterwards as much as maybe can. a hot flask as well yeah there's a space heater so if you're if you're if you're up the front and you manage to finish early you'll get you get prime position in front of the space heater so that's that's your that's your, uh, that's your incentive for going fast to, 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 to win the races you get full access to the space heater <laughs> then yeah absolutely so yeah i mean from memory i've done it i think two or three times as well and, and i just remember it being a pretty grueling kind of race to do you've got the cold to, to deal with and but I think the cold in itself maybe isn't necessarily the biggest factor. I think a lot of it is to do with the the kind of water and the, the full submersions that you have to do. How, how much do you think that impacts on a race in terms of positioning or where you could potentially come, um, given that it is a kind of winter race and you do have those full body submersions that you maybe don't get in other, other races, especially at that time of year? Um, how do you think that can impact your race, having to do those kind of full body submersions? Yeah, I think it's it, it varies. So it will. I think for some people, it'll really challenge them because they're not used to it, or they don't like the cold, or they struggle with the cold in terms of if you've got anything grippy after the water. So if they, you know, some people will get quite cold hands potentially, and then can't do like monkey bars and things afterwards. So if they're not like used to it from that point of view, eh, they might struggle in terms of the full water submersion. Some people might struggle in terms of getting a bit of brain freeze and they're not wanting to do it if they're determined they, like anyone can like do the submersions it's, but it is sort of a mental challenge more than an actual physical challenge so um you might get some that are sort of really fit but actually struggle more mentally with the cold or like slower from that point of view same race in the summer they might do much better but it's it's, it's fun to add it in uh, include it in the series because it then becomes like an all-round series more, doesn't it, if you've got winter races as well. You've got that kind of mental, as well as the physical, you know, having to yeah. kind of psych yourself up to do those, especially, I think they call them the lollipops. Lollipops. Which can offer, give you some right. Yeah. Energy. I think they're worse than the quarry. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think so, yeah. yeah. I, think it's, I think it's important to add for people maybe listening to this and haven't done it before, that there is, there is a lot of health and safety taken into consideration. There's... Yeah. Uh, Life vests, if you want to wear them, there's there's people on hand to fish out the water if you do get into any trouble. But yeah, as as a as a proper take your breath away um, moment and um, doing these <coughs> full submersions. And um, just to add to what Karen said about the the cold hands, um, a game changer for me last year was getting a pair of um, mitts, like these black mitts, or there's there's other brands out there, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, that are like kind of wetsuit type material. And that made a bit that made a big difference in um, being able to actually grip. Um, although I'd say last year the, the rigs weren't as difficult as they were in previous years. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see the setup this year because we've got new race directors. I heard mm. on another podcast, Dean, the race director, was talking about trying to utilize some of the, the grounds up at Knock Hill 
that mm -hmm. um, we haven't utilised before, or certainly not for a number of years. There was a big hill mentioned. <laughs> I think I know the one they're talking about, but um, yeah, not, <coughs> not promoting that too heavily. But uh, yeah, so we're interested to see if there's any new obstacles um, in it as well, with it being a new new race directors. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm certainly, I know Dean mentioned on his, his podcast well, and I think the, the spring-summer McTuff might... Um, might be a completely different course and there's lots of new obstacles. I think he mentioned they had taken some of the rat race stuff to weekend obstacles. So um, I'm quite excited mm -hmm. for that that race in the series because I think that's brand new to everyone. It's the first year they've run it. So it'll be interesting to see if they bring any of that over into the winter race or whether they're going to keep that a nice surprise for the kind of spring summer one. So that that's um, I'm looking forward to that one for sure. Um, and it definitely won't be as cool. So I guess it, it kind of segues nicely into kind of hints and tips you might give someone as a first timer. We've mentioned, you know, making sure you've got your clothes ready for getting changed and things like that. You've mentioned the having kind of some neoprene gloves. Is there anything else um, that you would recommend to people doing mixed up that you would kind of think these are your kind of to do list tick off items that you have to have <clears> with you? When you're um, I always have a hot water bottle in my clothes mm -hmm. so that my Although, depending on how long you take, you might have to refill it when you get back. But I also have a hot water bottle with um, and flasks of hot water. And then I use the water from the hot water bottle to clean myself because yeah, it's hot. So. It's warm. It's not hot by the time you finish it. And then yeah. I'll refill the hot water bottle with from the flask. It's like boiling again. And then you just put it in your belly after you're dry and dressed. Karen, you must have the, the biggest kit bag in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if anybody doesn't know, uh, when Karen comes to just do a, a normal training session, <laughs> she just be doing some barbell exercises. She still turns up with two kit bricks, full of stuff, yeah. full of things, <laughs> goes, um, yeah. all your all nutrition, probably a hot water bottle as well. Right, she's probably <laughs> the only person to wear a dry robe during that, doing a barbell exercise, probably. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Karen's got, Karen's got all the kit. Yeah, all the gear. No idea. And I've seen, no, I've seen, seen you get some kind of idea, I think. I know, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. I think I've seen some people run um, previous years with kind of wetsuits on or kind of yes. neoprene on. Um, have you guys ever done that? How do you find that? Um, are you too hot? Is it is it yeah. useful? I, um, I've not. I've not done that. But I know people, maybe Karen will better, but like maybe getting a, a thin, you can get these thin wetsuits from like the Catholic and stuff, can't you? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I just help. I know people have done that in the past. I run with a, a wetsuit t shirt on and wetsuit socks usually, I think. <laughs> From photos, that's what I normally do. Every year I look at photos <laughs> to remind me what I wore the last time. Uh, yeah, last year I ran with a wetsuit t shirt on and wetsuit socks, and I'm always boiling until the water. <laughs> mm. And then I'm like, oh, I'm glad I wore it. <laughs> but yeah, no, for the first like 10K, I'm like, oh, it's too hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say another another tip for people like the start line. It might be a bit different because it's organised by different organisers now, but it can be a little bit of a weight on the start line. Not like like really long, but even if it's ten minutes, you can be you can be standing that start line for 10, 15 minutes, depending how long, yeah, how mm. quick you, you, you join the, the the wave, if you like. So I would definitely make sure you got a full warm up beforehand. Don't rely on just warming up on the start line. Um, mm -hmm. Because you are, you could be standing there for 10, 15 minutes while the bagpipes play, and there's um, briefings and everything. So, uh, yes, get get yourself as warm as possible beforehand, and then keep moving on the start line. And if you've got any spectators with you, try and have them close to you, and just take mm -hmm. layers off at the last minute. Um, if you can hand it to somebody as well, um, that'd be a good shout. Yeah, because I remember, especially if we do the mass start again this year, it can get quite crowded in that pen as well. So don't expect to have bags of space for you to be able to be swinging your arms and kicking your legs and warming up properly because it can get yeah you know, get a thousand or so people in that start pen it can get um okay. nice stamped for the the start so um yeah just keep that in mind I guess it's a good idea you can normally find the, the FBF team running up and down the track with Gab at the front giving us a, a warm-up so yeah I would recommend I think we'll, <laughs> we used to we used to bring people in didn't we? we used to end up with a little group with us uh, we usually, who, we usually have a few hangers on yeah. <laughs> Everybody, anybody, if you see us warming up, anybody's welcome to join in. Yeah, come and come and jump in for sure. Come and jump in for sure. So um, so yeah, so if we turn, I guess, to the the kind of race in the series itself, 
Um, looking to kind of get your guys' thoughts on um, on those that are coming to do the race and um, try and get a little bit of a kind of um, prediction from you in terms of how, how you think people are going to do. And obviously you guys, I mean, um, speaking to, to the two of you, you're coming off a really strong performance, both of you from from last year's kind of UK series and, and the races in there. How how are you guys feeling coming into the race um, in January? Are you feeling strong? Are you backing yourselves to to take the win, given it's on kind of semi home turf? You've done it before. How how are you guys both feeling coming into the race? Karen, do I take that? <laughs> also, I do, I do. I do ladies first here. <laughs> so yeah. It should be good fun. I've done it before, which probably will help a bit. It should be good fun. There's quite a lot of fast uh, runners coming up from England this year. So that'll be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I think I should probably be near the sort of top, top three, top five in terms of who's there. But it dep- there's a lot of people coming that I don't know who they are. Um, it's hard to say. So as long as I get rid of this cold as well before, it'll be even better. What about you, Gav? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's not something I've been focusing on that much. Um, I'm more being focused on high rocks training, but we've been trying to do some sessions which do mimic uh, McTuff uh, conditions and, and that type of thing. So no, I've not been fully, um, fully focused on the, the training for it, um, but I still hope to, to do pretty well and, and be up there. But like Karen, there's, there's some names I see on the list that are uh, definitely common names to me and, and good to see some some coming up from down south but then there's mm-hmm. a there's a host of names I've done my I've done my research on Instagram I've done a bit of searching around and um, <laughs> I found out some information but some people I don't I mean, they've got really caught they've got really common <laughs> names like I don't know Colin Campbell or something like that and I'm like there's a lot of Colin Campbells out there so yeah I've got some info here but um yeah, there's some good strong runners. I think particularly in the, I think in the females actually, like I'd, I'd almost like to watch that because I think there could be, there could be three or four of you at the front, all like yeah. neck, neck, I reckon. Um, for a yeah, quite, there's, there's a lot of good runners in the females. I think. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, if we, come, if we come to them first, I mean, looking at the list, does does anyone stand out to you, Karen? Who are you watching, or who are you who are you going to be looking out for and chasing down potentially? Uh, so there's. The ones I sort of know, so Kate Stillwell, um, it's an obvious sort of name out there. Louise Ferriman, Libby Joyce is coming as well, and she'll get faster every year. She's one of the junior athletes, so she's um, and she's really good. So we're chasing an end, um, looking further down. Uh, Sandy Powell as well, so she's another Scottish athlete, so she'll be more used to the cold. So she'll um, expect her to do well um, as well. Uh, and then there's a couple of people that looking on their sort of Facebook and things they look like runners but it's really hard to know <laughs> how um, well they do I think one Julie was down at the farm the other day and she, she was running really well as well so I expect her to be up near the front as well and she's she's from Aberdeen so she should do well with the cold uh, nice yeah there's definitely definitely a few in there I know um, I think Lee Donald who's done a few um, OCRs in the past she's actually pulled out of, yeah of I saw that because I think she's climbing Everest and went to I, um, I saw that in my research yeah. I saw that as well that's pretty cool so she's yeah, quite extreme yeah so um, so she's she's actually pulled out I think um, like you say we've got Kate who runs with Nuclear Phoenix I think she has done winter nuts a couple of times and done really well so from a cold perspective I know that um, you know well, she can stand up there in the cold for sure Kate Kate won Kate won Challenge Cup. So yeah, that's right. yeah, so she she finished ahead of Becky Neal and um, and Louise in the Challenge Cup. So I know that Kate's a really strong runner. So McTuff, you probably say is quite suited to running running, especially yeah. across a cross country runner. So yeah, I'd expect her to be up there as well. Yeah. I know Louise is doing a lot of um if you follow Louise on, on socials, she is yes. training for the cold water. I think it's actually for winter nuts, but it's going to stand her in really good stead for McTuff as well. She's basically been going into ice baths, coming out and going straight into like a, a run, coming back, going back into an ice bath. So she's been in and out of water um, constantly. So she's um, she's trained really specifically for the cold. So I think she's um, she's definitely a contender. Um, and like you say, Sandy, who runs for SBF, um, at Scott Brown, she took first place in Beach Ballistic last year, I think, didn't she? Yep. So... Um, 
yeah, she's been training really hard as well, so I'm expecting her to do well as well as yourself, Karen. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good, there's only, I think, 19 or so women signed up so far. It'd be good to get get a few more. I think it's always the case that there's not ever as many women on the start line as there is as guys. That's I think that's just the way it is. But um, that's nine. Just to clarify, that's nineteen competitive women. There's there's I others. So, yeah. I there's so. other, uh, aye, that's the way I'm taking it. Is yeah. that's, just, that's just the competitive list. That yeah. Going to I believe so. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully there'll be a few more. But no, it looks it's a strong. I think it's a strong um, set of, of, of runners there for sure. That um. And if you were to pick your top three women, if you were to put some money on it, who who would you? Mm-hmm. Who? Uh, so first, probably Kate Stillwell. I mean, I don't, there's lots that I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. But if you do it on the ones I know, probably Kate Stillwell. And then I'm going to go with what well, varies a lot. Who will be next? Probably mm-hmm. like Sandy, myself, and then Louise. Based on just guessing, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everything can change on the day, right? So it's uh, oh, of it's, course. It's, Who knows? You don't know. Somebody might be ill on the day, feeling rubbish on the day, feeling great on the day. So you don't know. I'll stick my neck in the line. Yeah. I'll go for first place. First place, Kate Stillwell. Second yeah. place, uh, Louise Ferryman. Third place, Karen McQuarrie and Libby Joyce and Sandy Pow nipping at everybody's heels. Yeah. Nice. That's um, that's exactly what I had. I had um, the same, uh, the same, same list as you. So um, we'll put fifty quid on it and see what happens. Eh? So, <laughs> um, and then if we turn to the guys, there's a few more, um, few more guys on the list that are taking um, on the competitive race. Um, mm-hmm. Any any standouts for you, Gav? Anyone you're going to be able to keep an eye on on the day? Yeah, there's there's some strong runners there. Um, again, don't know them. I far from know them all, but um, there's Mal- Malcolm Smith is always up there in um, McTuff races. I think he seems to be there every year. Always goes off really strong. Um, good runner. Um, so Malcolm Smith will be up there. Adam Pollock. Um, he he's been doing a bit of high rocks stuff as well but I know he went out to the OCR World Champs um, for that so he's, he's a pretty strong all-rounder we've also got Harvey Mitchell Divers Deep, am mm-hmm. I, yeah. oh yeah I think I'll be interested to see how Harvey is because I know that he he went and did a he went up Kilimanjaro and did mm-hmm. was it the like a highest I can't remember. It was some kind of. It was a race. Like a bit of a race. Yeah, I think so. Or a trail. I know that he he suffered some injuries after that. I think, or I think ingrown toenails without too, too much information. I think I actually struggled with is is what I'd heard. Um, so I know. I think he's had to take a wee bit of time out of training. I'm not. I'm not sure how much it's impacted him. So it'll be interesting to see how Harvey goes because he's he's really strong. He's um, he's won his age group at the Spartan World Championships as well. So. Um, definitely one to watch. Uh, Gordon Lamp, Gordon Lambert from Freestyle OCR. He he finished second at our uh, the Fit Body Farm head to head races. I believe that was a, a couple of years ago. So I know Gordon's a good runner as well. Coming up from down south, you've got Rick Burgess from Raw Fit yeah. as well. And um, it's good to see him making the trip. I think, he, I think it's maybe his son coming with him as well. Jake Burgess. I'm, I'm just going. I think so. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. So shout out to those guys for making the trip. So yeah, yeah. There's a good few folk. Um, yeah, that's uh, the ones. Craig McQueen as well. I see him. Craig's a good kind of masters athlete, and yeah, uh, he'll hold his own over the kind of when it comes to endurance side of things too. So mm. yeah, I'd actually interestingly, I saw the name Robbie Simpson on the, the list. Mm-hmm. Like, that name seems familiar. So I did a research and that Robbie Simpson came up who is a professional trail athlete. Oh, okay. Um, Scottish professional trail athlete. And I was like, and he's got a sub 30 minute 10K. I was like, right. Oh, I wonder if this guy's dipping his toe in the Yeah. Like John Alvin. So I actually sent him a message on Instagram this afternoon and then um, yeah. he came back and said, no, it's, it's not him. It must be another Robbie oh. Simpson. So I was, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I think trying to um, take on somebody who's got a sub thirty minute ten k and is a um, professional trail runner, um, yeah. uh, may not, may not that would be interesting to see though. That'd be great race. Yeah. 
I said that to him. So you never know, you might get a last minute entry. I might have... <laughs> you might have encouraged them to join. I know, what have I done? What have I done? What's this McTuff and now I'll have one of a look at it. Yeah, you never know, you might rock up on the day. Absolutely. Quite, quite, a, few, quite a few names that are foreign names. Um, so you do, like, I have noticed in the past, like, people coming over from Europe. He's coming over as well. So again, you just don't these guys could be absolutely tremendous. Um yeah. I'd say there's a good ten names in there that <clears throat> sound sound foreign. Um whether they reside in Scotland or whether they're coming making a trip, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yep, exciting to see what happens. Yeah. And if you were to put your money on it of the names that you do know, would you would you be a <laughs> um, man? I'd like I'd like to similar to Karen, i you know. I like to think I'll be kind of top three, top five. I don't really know the order. I'll put. I'm not going. I'm not going to go order here. I'll just say who in the top three. So I'll put Harvey in there. I'll put Malcolm Smith in there, um, and I'll throw my. I'll throw myself. In. <laughs> 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 but I think. I think likes of Adam Pollock. Um, there'll be others: Craig McQueen, yeah. Gordon Lambert. All these guys, I think they'll be they'll be pushing us definitely. <laughs> Anything you you want to add there, Karen, for the guys? I probably know the guys even less than I know the females. Yeah, I know that Harvey is uh, really good. He's one of the juniors, so he sometimes struggles with the male weights now that he's moved up to male sort of stuff. But that shouldn't be much of an issue at McTuff, I wouldn't have thought. In terms of top three, just this is just based on things Gavin said before. <laughs> So maybe it would be like your top three might be sort of who would also be there, sort of Adam, Malcolm, Gavin are probably gonna be somewhere in that region. And Harvey as well, I would have thought, near the front. Depending on how he is, if he is injured or not, I don't know. Yeah. So he's maybe maybe um, got over that and comes back strong. So yeah, Harvey who runs for SBF as well, um a really good junior athlete um to look out for, really coming through the ranks and, and doing really well. So we'll see how he gets on at McTuff. Um I guess just to wrap up, is there a is there a favourite obstacle you're looking forward to um, at McTuff? Something that you, you enjoy doing at that race every year? What would you say? I quite, I mean, I, I always like rig type obstacles. So if there's mm-hmm. if there's much in that, um, the way of rig stuff, I think I'm sure there'll be there'll, there'll be a couple of those. Um, as long as the hands aren't too cold, it should be good. If they do, if they bring back the carpools, we did the previous years they've done like the. They've attached a rope to the car, the kind of race cars. Nice uh, just a little tip for the guys from McTuff, if you are listening to this and you're going to do the carpool, please don't do it on an uphill because that happened a few years ago and you nobody know, could, <laughs> could shift the cars. So please have, please have somebody test it out beforehand and do it on the flat and don't have us trying to pull a car uphill because that was so destroying a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Or anything like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Karen, what about you? What's your favourite? Um, I don't know if I really have. A, I quite like the rope climb right at the end because you know you're just like round the corner oh, yeah, and then yeah. you're near the finish. Um, so that's always quite good. Uh, and I always did those lollipops, but I'm sure it'll be fine. You just got to go fast, fast. Just do it fast. Do it fast. Don't think about it. Just go for yeah. it. It was, it's over before you know it, I think. But yeah, it's um yes, exactly. Cool. Okay. Um. Well, I guess um, have you got any final final McTuff thought? Any final tip trick, or have you given them all out, or you don't want to give them out? You don't want to give anyone a competitive advantage. <laughs> just come and have a great time. I think. Yeah, I think give just just enjoy the fact that we're back to full racing. Enjoy the start line, being able to be close to each other. And love the fact that there's a Scottish series which has been created thanks to Lindsay and some other people. Um, so it really get it really creates a buzz in the Scottish community again. So yeah, fantastic! Can't wait. Brilliant. Well, I think we can probably wrap it up there. I personally, I'm really excited to get back into racing. I've not done it myself for a couple of years due to injury. So I am. I've been somehow roped into doing McTuff. I don't know quite how it happens, but. <laughs> Um, I'll be on that start line on the 8th of January. Really looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing everyone on the start line enjoying OCR again in Scotland. I think it was safe to say this time last year we probably were a little bit worried that it wasn't going to come back. But five races in the series um, is is really exciting and really good. Um, and I can't wait to kick off the first race and see you all there. So 
Thanks to Can I give a oh, quick shout out? Can yet go for it. Quick, quick shout out. Sorry, I should have said this earlier. Just to a couple of people who are doing this for the first time. I know there'll be quite a few of you. Um, so um, shout out to Barry Mitchell, the uh, yep. trainer with us, and also I think we have to give a bit of a shout out to Anna Wade. <laughs> uh, yes. if, Definitely. If you, if you see somebody running the entire race in pink, then <laughs> that's probably Anna. That's- so, yeah. um, like like many people, you tend to get roped into things by your friends, and you, you sign up, you, you get false promises, and you sign up to things, and then you realise exactly what's involved. So, I know that that Anna's probably cacking her pants a wee bit. Um, <laughs> I want my better phrase, but Anna, you'll be absolutely fine. Good luck, go and enjoy yourself. Um, so that's my shout outs. Yeah, I'll be running round with Anna, shouting at her, telling her to get in the water. So, yeah, if anyone sees her, give her a, a few words of encouragement for sure. You won't miss her. She'll be all dressed in pink, like Gav says. Um, <laughs> cool. All right, no worries. Well, thanks very much, guys, for, for coming on and giving us your thoughts today. Um, we'll kind of hopefully come back and talk um, about the next few races, um, if he's around. So um, thank you very much for your time, and um, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Who's Scott podcast, produced and edited by UK OCR. If you're interested in obstacle course racing in Scotland, join the Scottish OCR community and British Obstacle Sports. Links to both are in the comments. And don't forget to leave us a review. Till next time.